We like it that you want to be the deliberate creator of your experience because whether you know it or not, you are the creator of your experience. And a lot of people are doing a lot of that creation by default. They're just offering vibrations all over the place and law of attraction is responding to it and they like some of it and they don't like some of it. But the point is they talk about all of it. So as you're talking about wanted, that's good. But as you're talking about not wanted, not so good because all of it practices a vibration. And sometimes without even meaning to, you practice a vibration that causes that step three part, that allowing part, not to happen. Oh, you want it. You want it so much. You want it so much. And Source has delivered it so fully. But you're not seeing it. You're not realizing it. It's not evidential to you yet because you're vibrationally off signal. Esther and those back at the office in San Antonio had a really wonderful experience in the last couple because there's a beautiful water feature there. It's man-made. The well pumps the water up to the headwaters and it flows down a beautiful stream with some falls and trickles into a big pond down at the bottom. And there's a filter that filters it and keeps the water clear and keeps the fish in the pond happy. But it wasn't filtering and the pond was not clear and the fish weren't happy something was wrong and so the pool people came out and they just assumed that there was something wrong with the filter so they put a bigger stronger one in but it just worked harder and harder and the pond was still not clearing the pressure was building in this tank way more than it should have been Esther went into the pump house and didn't want to stay because it felt to her that that pump was about to blow up and she didn't want to be in there with it when it did she could just feel the strain in its efforting to get the job done but there was something that was keeping it from doing its job so then it was discovered that the pond pulls water from the bottom comes through pipes into the filter filter was calling it in filter was filtering it and trying to put it back into the pond through some other pipes but those pipes were completely clogged caliche had built up in them very hard texas soil it becomes almost concrete like and so several men for several days with several different tools tried to clear out those pipes chisel away put the plumber's snake in them it was obvious that that was not going to happen and the pipes had enough twists and turns that it was reported to Esther, we are not going to make this happen this way. And so the idea seemed obvious. Well, we're going to need some more pipes putting the water back into the pond. And so they laid them on top of the ground. No point in burying them until you know your theory is correct, right? put the pipes on top of the ground and now oh, the pressure tank is happy the filter oh what a sigh of relief it breathes as the water is now flowing back easily into the pond seems very simple doesn't it water out clean it up put it back step one step two step three and so we are suggesting to you that you give up on trying to clean out your pipes because there's a lot of gunk in there and a lot of it's been there for a long time and it's hardened it's become immovable but you could lay some new pipes you could lay new plumbing you could put new inlet you could much more easily just establish some new ideas about some new things and you'll discover on those new ideas that when you ask it is given and in your absence of clogged pipes what is given is recognized by you is revealed to you is realized by you is experienced by you very very quickly and this is our way of saying to you Rather than coming to a gathering like this with things that you are aware of that are not working as well as you'd like them to, with issues that you want to discuss, if you will start with new things, new things 
that you have not yet clogged your pipes about. You will allow these universal laws to deliver to you results of your clear thought and you will begin to feel your true power. That's the only way that we know that our human friends, we love you so much, can begin to know their worthiness. Because when you ask and it feels like it isn't given, you stop feeling worthy. You start trying to explain why you're asking and not getting when it looks like that one's asking and getting and that one's asking and getting. And then you make up the most ridiculous explanations of why you're asking and not getting. I was bad in a past life. I wasn't born to the right people. I didn't follow my religion carefully enough. I'm being punished by God. I'm being cursed by. And all it is, as you clogged up your own pipes, that's all it is. You practiced thoughts and you practiced them long enough that they became chronic thoughts or chronic beliefs. Beliefs are just thoughts that you keep thinking, vibrational patterning. So when you say, I want that, you also say, but it's not likely. I want that, but it won't come. I want that, but I've never had it. I want that, but I hardly know anybody that has it. I want that, but the government's in the way. I want that, but my mate's in the way. I want that, but my kids are in the way. I want that, but I don't know what to do. I want that, but I'm lost. I want that, but I'm tired. I want that. So you just keep clogging your pipes, not even knowing you're doing it, because after all, you're telling the truth, you're facing reality. But it's true. But it's true, Esther would say to us, Abraham, but it's true. And we would say to her again and again, we know there are a lot of things that are true. And if you're using the truth of it as your criteria to give it your attention, you're clogging your pipes with all kinds of truths that are preventing you from the truths that you want to live. It's just a matter of what you're giving your attention to. It's all about the amount of airtime that you're giving to whatever you're giving your attention to. So when you want something and you talk about why you want it or how it might feel when it comes or how you believe that it could come even though it isn't here yet that's not pipe clogging that's laying new avenues for what you want to flow to you but when you explain why you think things aren't working out for you every word you speak puts a little more caliche in your pipe and we don't care where you live was a little bit more of that obstacle in your way so we like that analogy like all Alan analogies there is no perfect analogy but we want you to realize that you are the creator of your own reality and that you get to choose what you're giving your attention to and the more choices you make that feel good when you make them the clearer your flow and the more easy it is for you to be in the vibrational place to feel the inspiration so that what you want can begin to flow into your experience. You know how it works that you ask and it is it becomes a vibrational reality first. Our physical friends say, well, that's not very exciting to me. I don't want a vibrational reality. I want a real reality. I want one that I can experience with my physical senses and that others can observe as they look at me. And we say, well, then what you've got to do is figure out what you're doing with your point of attraction because you put it into the vortex and the vortex has been gathering all of the cooperative components for everything that you want and is delivering it back to you. But what's your point of attraction letting in? If you're asking for something that has a very high, good feeling vibrational frequency and you're feeling very discouraged and depressed, then your pipes are clogged. Your point of attraction doesn't match your request. So this is the thing that we want to discuss with you today. Does your point of attraction match the request that you've got going on? Does your point of attraction right now, which means what you're focused upon, what you have been practicing, what your habit of vibrational output is, we've been calling it your grid. Is your vibrational grid a match to what you want or is it a match to something else? And we can answer that question for you in most cases. Your grid doesn't match what you want, it matches what you've got. And the reason it matches what you've got is because you're talking about what you've got all the time. 
You're observing it and talking about it and debating it and discussing it with others and practicing the vibrational frequency of it. And then occasionally speaking about what you want, but this is what I've got. It seems like, um, as humans, we put a lot of emphasis and responsibility on what it means to be a family and you're supposed to do this and you have to do that. Is there a real, besides being just born into a family, is there a real responsibility or obligation to a family? Is there a purpose to family? All of you came forth with the intent to uplift. And those that you are spending the most time with, you have the greatest probability of influencing them. So if you are tuned in deliberately to your highest disc, if you are vibrationally aligned and feeling resonance with who you really are, and holding someone as your object of attention, they benefit by that positive exposure to that pure positive energy. That's what uplifting is, you see. A family, for the most part, is an avenue into physical experience. But it can be so much more. All of you want to uplift. We are wanting to choose these words carefully because in a family that doesn't understand this who feels guarded then there is a perpetuation of lower vibrational discs going on and people are seeking alignment and finding it in lots of different ways every religion is about that people reaching for that and often finding it in churches of all nature but most people even those like Esther who are deliberately practicing understanding law of attraction and really wanting to gain control of her vibrational offering in this environment of contrast it's easy to get focused upon something that doesn't allow you that full resonance and so what the family is first and foremost no matter how many of you there are in your family it's an opportunity to really practice your frequency and see the evidence of your grid fleshed out that's why families do have personalities as families. Esther feels family with so many of those who are coming to these gatherings. Jerry and Esther have said for years, it feels like the same group is just moving from city to city to city to city. Because there's a continuity about this. Because so many of you are resonating with the wholeness of who you are. And so we have a leading edge discussion like these that we are having with you here today where we are actually clarifying in new proportion these subjects and people all over the planet who are resonant with this vibrational work are feeling that understanding even though they were not privy to the words that they heard. But next time we have that conversation, they still will be more up to speed. That's the benefit of that. So we would like to say that there is this earth family and we're talking about all of you, not just the humans, but the beasts as well. And then there's this human family you have families of consciousness your blood family is rarely your vibrational family rarely rarely because you didn't come wanting that feathered nest you came wanting to discover your point of attraction and wanting the thrill of watching law of attraction bring your point of attraction to you and flesh it out in fullness you see helpful I just want to say I woke up this morning and decided to come and I pre-paved this whole thing in the shower I was even in traffic for an hour and I'm not even surprised that I was the first one I got called up here <laughs>